banana. Welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll be taking a look at the thermals of the banana pie m64 now i just recently unboxed this one so go ahead and take a look at the previous video and in my previous video i did mention that i am a bit skeptical about the thermals uh the company didn't provide a heatsink or a fan to go with this uh, board but this type of processor usually heats up a lot and we have seen this happening on the uh, raspberry pi 3 it's the exact same uh, technology they are using here cortex a53 is at 1.2 gigahertz and it's not by a company some say something like qualcomm that they would uh, give too much of an attention to uh, the thermals so i was expecting uh, this to heat up a lot and it actually did so let's uh, go ahead and see uh, how it turns out so i am using geekbench 4 to benchmark it for now uh, it's more than enough uh, to give me usable results and what you are seeing right now at the screen are the three results so the lowermost result is without a heat sink or a fan and you can see the single core is at 495 and the multi core is at 1168 now at this time the temperatures were reaching way beyond 90 degrees celsius and touching at max 95 now even for a very high grade cpu this is a lot until unless you are using something like texas instruments this is unacceptably high and your cpu will die uh, so let's go ahead to our second result the middle one which is with the heat sink only no fan only the heat sink and this is the exactly uh, this is exactly the same heat sink uh, i use with the raspberry pi 3 and it has worked great for me so i had some link around and i put that on and it and this is the results the single core results just fluctuated a little bit there it's nothing we can ignore that but the real change comes on the multi-core side where we get a bump of almost a hundred uh, marks uh, on geekbench 3 uh, geekbench 4 so what we are seeing here is the heat sink di dissipates heat for some time but then uh, as it's not very big it starts collecting heat and heats up itself and then again heats up the processor so the max temps here were around 80 to 85 uh, didn't touch 90 though uh, but still 80 to 85 is still on the edge uh, and now let's go ahead and add a fan and this is what we get we do have a slight bump in the multi-core range the single core one stays the same but the uh, benefit here is that i didn't see a temp i didn't see the temperatures go beyond 65 degrees and that's saying a lot we have come from 85 back down 20 degrees to 65 and believe me 65 is a very comfortable temperature for a cpu at load and that is the sort of temperature where you want to keep a cpu at not at 85 and of course not at 95 so if you are planning on buying this uh, do consider buying some sort of a heat sink uh, i'll try to leave a link in the description to the exact same one i have used but it might not be available it was available for a short time at rs components and this is it uh, so if you're using the uh, banana pie m64 go ahead and use a heat sink as well as a fan if you are planning to do some uh, heavy computational stuff or you'll uh, get bad results in term of the uh, life span of the processor as well as computational power so thank you so much for watching this video again i will have many more videos to do with the banana pi 64 coming up in the next few days maybe multiple videos a day depending upon how fast i can finish all the benchmarking and the tests so subscribe to this channel like this video hit me up with the comment and i will see you all in the next one